if I mandate by law that you have to sell me, I don't know, let's say your grandmother, your dead grandmother gave you a bracelet, an heirloom, it's very important, right? And I mandate, you know what? You have to sell that to me, but I'm gonna pay you for it. Do you care that I pay you? Could it possibly be less relevant? Why? Because it's priceless. You can't replace that. You know what else is priceless? The right to defend yourself and your family. Question of the day, what do you think the Democrats' end game is right now with proposing the increasingly radical anti-gun laws like a mandatory buyback we'll get to in a second? Do you think it's just theater at this point? Or do you believe they've really deceived themselves in, or deceived their constituency into supporting these proposals? So let's get into some context. Many Democratic presidential candidates, this isn't just some random person on Twitter, people running for president, proposing mandatory gun buybacks, okay? Program similar oh. to Australia, should come as no surprise. It started with President Obama. We know that other countries in response to one mass shooting have been able to craft laws that almost eliminate mass shootings. I don't miss you. You have a federal <laughs> government buyback program uh, in your plan. How is that going to work? Well, first of all, I want to say my colleague and I both have been hearing this on the campaign trail. Whatever they say, well, first of all, it means worse I'm not going to answer your question. Yeah. Gunshots <laughs> in First of all, I'm going to go over here Ending instead. the sales of weapons of war, but also importantly and politically difficult to say, buy those weapons of war back. Mandate that, not voluntarily. Let's be really clear with our fellow Americans. No place for an AK-47. There's a Hail Mary for the man from El Paso. The streets wow. of our communities. <laughs> no How dog would whistles you deal weapons with of war. all the assault weapons are already out there that people have? What I would do is I would try to... I, I would institute it looks like he's perpetually looking program. at the sun. <laughs> and I would move <laughs> in the squinty. direction of making sure that that, in fact, was what we tried to do. Get them off the street. A, a sty. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, so before, let's, before we continue, uh, it's important to note that buyback, as it's referred to when, it, when we're talking about Australia, it's an all-out gun ban. Yep. Period. End of story. It's a mandatory buyback. At least Beto was consistent. At least he was being honest about it, saying mm -hmm. we are going to mandate this. It will not be voluntary. It's a mandatory buyback, Australia, where the government, they will confiscate your guns and they'll toss you some pocket change to try and make it sting a little less. So how far would this mandatory buyback, this gun ban extend? Uh, many candidates, you saw they said weapons of war. They use the term assault weapon, mm -hmm. which doesn't actually mean anything. So first off, I guess if we're just talking about semi-automatic rifles, which was what a lot of them want to do, they want to toss it all under this umbrella. Deadliest school shooting in the United States history committed with handguns, okay? Vast majority of gun violence is coming from handguns. People need to understand that. So it wouldn't even necessarily make a dent. Uh, even if you could get all the criminals to obey the handguns, uh, rifles, if they could ha hand over their, I just, it's, it's not gonna work. Here's something else that's important to note. Uh, Joe Biden went on to say, not just assault weapons, um, but he's talking about any gun, did you guys see this clip? Any yeah, gun that has a magazine with <laughs> multiple bullets. I think he's I think he's been consuming buckets of salt water and someone needs to tell him that <laughs> you need to find a fresh body. It has to stop. The idea that we don't have elimination of assault type weapons, magazines that can have hold multiple bullets in them is absolutely mindless. Wait, what constitutes multiple? Two! Any gun that can hold uh, yeah, two bullets. Know. We'll get to that in a second. The over-under shotgun. For, dangerous. <laughs> former Vice President Biden added uh, back when he was Vice President that uh, he wanted to kill innocent people. He had to order a drone strike. So he doesn't want you to know that he's not yeah. entirely without. <laughs> this is something important. I don't want to get into the wordplay where people just go, like, well, it's not a magazine, it's a clip. Uh, he said bullet. Holds yes. bullets. That's important to note, it's not a bullet, it's a round. Okay, magazines hold rounds. This isn't just a bunch of technical wordplay, this matters, because a bullet is just a projectile that usually leaves the gun, right? It's mm -hmm. loaded into a round. This is important to note because it tells you that he has no semblance of gun safety. Mm -hmm. A round, you've heard the term live round? Mm -hmm. A round is the case, primer, and the bullet, and gunpowder. That's important to note because you can basically send off a live round with a hammer if you hit that primer. Think of it this way, for people who don't know anything about guns. They used to have muskets, right? They would put the gunpowder in, they'd pack it, then they'd put in a little ball bullet because they didn't understand ballistics at all or how things travel <laughs> yeah. to the air, apparently, even though they had arrows. They'd jam that in, they would light it, and it would hit a flint. So a round is a little case with a primer that the striker hits, spark, gunpowder burns, and then the bullet leaves the barrel. It's just important to highlight because uh, it shows that they haven't done any research at all. I mean, either you, you want to believe that they don't know or they know and they're lying. It's like the 77 yeah. cents on the dollar. How does he not have someone go, learn the difference between rounds and bullets? I have no idea. Because uh, they don't know either. Yeah. I don't think that. I don't have any. It's like, is there anyone in this office who knows what firearms are all about? Spotlight, I'll tell you what firearms are all about, Charlie Brown. Something else was noted. <laughs> Guns weren't purchased from the government in the first place. The buyback, the language here, yeah. okay? 
The guy, did you go? Did you go down to your local uh, DMV and purchase your your Ruger? No, you didn't. So how are they going to buy it back from the people? They have no purchasing power. By the way, it just means you, the taxpayer. Right. Who's going to buy it back? You, the taxpayer, will foot the bill to mandate the purchase of other people's firearms. If we're going to buy it back, O.J. Simpson bought back memorabilia. <laughs> By the way, so let's get to a couple of reasons why the buyback wouldn't work practically before we get to the, the principle as to why it's actually morally abhorrent. It doesn't work. Most guns, when you talk about Australia, they were still in circulation. Okay? Australia, with the mandatory buyback, I think they recovered, what, one-sixth? One-sixth of the guns, I think 600,000-something. They left over three million in circulation. By the way, it also had, not surprisingly, once you understand those numbers, no effect on mass shootings. Many studies have yep. shown that the gun buyback program didn't work. Other countries did not pass legislation. They had the same trends in mass shootings. Mm -hmm. yeah. New Zealand did too. And I know that you're saying, well, hold on a second, wait a second. New Zealand had a mass shooting in Christchurch because that's an older source. Well, of course, so did Australia. They had a mass shooting that was committed with one of the remaining three million guns. Who could Put have that. seen that happening? <laughs> We've also tried to implement uh, gun buybacks in the United States if we're going to a, a domestic level here. It resulted in, surprise, wait, more crime. More crime when they did gun buybacks here in the United States. Oh. So that's the practical. Here's something that I think is important uh, to understand is, like you said, you can't buy somebody's rights. Yeah. Right? Th this is a pretty obvious. A mandatory gun buyback, it violates the Second Amendment in a major way. Sure, Australia can pass it because they don't have a Second Amendment. They don't have the Constitution that we have. That's why I think our country is better than theirs. And I also do wonder if they do manage to use the legislative branch to push this through, sure. it would go straight to judi judicial. And I would imagine they would rule it unconstitutional. Well, absolutely. It's, it's still going to have to, you're going to run through two, at least two different questions of, first, is it going to violate the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms? Or second, right. is it going to be a taking under the Fifth Amendment, the Due Process Clause, which is how governments are able to say they can use eminent domain or inverse condemnation to take property from citizens in order to have it for the public use. Now, a main argument that people are using right now, even the, the Kathy Giffords website talks right now about how, oh, it doesn't matter if it's a taking, we're just saying it's the police power, but they completely gloss over the fact that you still have the Second Amendment as an obstacle. Right. Well, it's important to note that the dissenting opinions in Heller versus D.C., they believed that it was not a private citizen's right to own any firearms. It had nothing to do with magazine wow. capacity. It was just, no, 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 you don't have the right wow. to own a revolver or a shotgun at all, effectively, mm -hmm. unless a sheriff says that you have the right to do it. And this is, by the way, why it's unconstitutional. You cannot buy back someone's right to self-defense. Okay, this, this is important. Well, they, they always sort of thinly veil this with the veneer of, well, we're not just going to take people's guns away. We're just going to buy them back. Well, what if they don't want to sell them back? We're going to force them to. Well, how are you going to force them to? Guys with guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And but this is one thing where they talk, if it's, it's not voluntary, by definition, if it's mandatory, it almost seems as though those would be oxymorons. It's voluntarily <laughs> mandatory. Well, let, let, let's use an example here. If I mandate by law that you have to sell me, I don't know, let's say your grandmother, your dead grandmother gave you a bracelet, an heirloom, it's very important, right? She gave it to you on your deathbed. And I mandate, you know what? You have to sell that to me, but I'm going to pay you for it. Do you care that I pay you? Could it possibly be less relevant? Why? Because it's priceless. You can't replace that. You know what else is priceless? The right to defend yourself and your family. You have yeah, people yeah. giving a, a rep, Matt, uh, I think it was Matt Schaefer in Texas. Uh, they were giving Schaefer, him crap yeah. because he said, no one can strip you of your God-given rights. And they go, oh, oh, so it's an AR-15 is a God-given right? Said, this was, I think, Alyssa Milano, the serial abortionist. No, listen, AR-15 is not a right. But the ability to defend yourself yeah. and your kin Yes, that is a right. And it's not a right granted by government, but an inalienable right granted by God and birth, which means the government can't take it away. They can only recognize it. It just so happens that firearms are the only way to defend yourself against marauders, criminals. Yes, a tyrannical government. It's a right to have a self-defense tool at your disposal if and when the need could arise. And it, it's not, by the way, this is important to note, it's an inanimate object, right? This is important that people need to d discuss this when we're talking about guns. It's not a right to use a firearm unlawfully. Just like you don't have a right to use a fork unlawfully. That's why we have laws regarding the lawful use of firearms. It's not a right to kill, which may be why the left is so confused about it in the first place. See, they think that killing unborn babies is a God-given right. They're a culture and a dogma of death. So that's all they see when they look at an armed populace. Yeah. I see life. I see 500,000 to 3 million defensive uses of firearms each and every year in the United States, according to the CDC. I see 500,000 to 3 million crimes stopped, rapes thwarted, lives saved, lives of mothers, sisters, daughters, wives. This is a big difference. 
And not just because of, of conservatives and liberal, and I know people say, well, I don't believe in labels, man. I'm not talking about just left versus right, but let's say it's very stark contrast between the founding fathers and today's progressives. See, mm -hmm. the founding fathers, to go back to what Bill said, they drafted the Constitution uh, and outlined inalienable rights, not granted ever by government because they believed in God. They drafted the Constitution and these rights because they believe in God. Today's pro-abortion, anti-self-defense left, they would rather play God. Did you enjoy that? That was a video. This is a studio. This is a microphone. That's a subscription box, a notification bell. This is a mug. That's the most important description in all this because we don't get to make a living here on YouTube since they've demonetized us for being offensive, <laughs> whatever that means. It means pretty much everything in 2019. So join up at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club today. You get the entire daily show access to the whole Blaze catalog and this wonderful hand-etched mug, and you don't have to say goodbye.